welcome to the Galactic Window Space Podcast. My name is Nick, and you might know me as the Orbital Alliance right here on the internet. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about things like the ISS being deorbited, what it means to be an international partner in space exploration, and we'll follow that up by discussing what the future of human space exploration might look like. So if this is your first time listening to the show, I want to say welcome. If you're a return listener, I'm also going to tell you welcome. It's good to have you here. Today, we're going to be learning about space, which is the whole purpose of this podcast. The Galactic Window exists to help look into the universe a little bit more closely through the eyes of people, humans. We all have our own galactic window. That's our unique view into the universe. And I'm excited to share mine with you today. Now, if you're a return listener, you would notice that this is not a live streamed video podcast like it normally is. This is a solo audio only episode. And I'm actually very excited to try out this format to see how things go. And this is going to be a type of show that I'm going to be doing in between the live streamed video episodes. And if you tuned in to episode seven, you might remember that I recently invited my friend Tan, also known as Chasing the Milk, to become a permanent co-host right here on the show, which I'm extremely excited about because Tan has a huge passion for astronomy, space, and building community within the astronomy world. And he's going to be helping me co-host those guest episodes that are live streamed right here on YouTube. But I also think Tan will be eventually contributing to these solo episodes as well. So we'll kind of be playing a little bit of relay on those in-betweens, and we'll be having a great time sharing our perspective on things happening in the space and astronomy industries. But today we're airing episode eight, the first ever audio only episode of the Galactic Window Space Podcast. So let's strap in, get ready to launch, and learn about space together. So let's dive into the meat and potatoes of the show right out of the gate. The International Space Station has been in the news recently for several reasons, but we're going to talk about one of them right now, and that is that NASA has officially announced that they've contracted SpaceX to create a deorbiting vehicle to safely bring the ISS back down to Earth when it's all said and done with the ISS program. Now, there is so much to this, and there are a lot of theories buzzing around about what might become of this, but I first want to give a little bit of context on what this actually means and what's happening first because not all of you of course might know about what the iss is all about and if you know me personally or even just watch me here on the internet you'd know that i am a diehard international space station fan i love taking pictures of it i've done it several times and i just like watching the news of this wonderful orbital outpost that we all have access to from our own backyards it's amazing so first Here's a little history. The International Space Station has been in orbit since 1998. Now, to be clear, that's not the whole International Space Station. They actually spent at least a decade putting it together, assembling all the parts, and it has been currently inhabited by humans continuously since year 2000. So basically, the International Space Station has been functional since 1998 to some degree and at this point it's safe to say that this thing is getting pretty old and really no spacecraft has ever spent that much time in the vacuum of space like the iss no spacecraft has been continually inhabited by humans for this long and this is new territory for human space exploration it's amazing and the iss has been a beacon for research for space exploration for human life here on earth for engineering for all kinds of sciences it's been amazing now the thing about that though is that just like a home or a building here on planet earth things don't stay new forever right like eventually seals on your windows start cracking you need to replace the roof maybe there's leaks in the plumbing Um, a whole host of problems can start happening in your home or your 
office, at work, whenever they possibly want to start happening. You basically need to be ready to counteract those things. And the astronauts do a very good job of solving a lot of those problems with the assistance of ground control and all the different cooperative countries that have been supporting the station over the years. However, some of those things you just can't combat. And the International Space Station has been existing in this super hostile environment of the vacuum of space for a very long time. It's also been perpetually experiencing cosmic radiation and stellar radiation from our own sun. And this is just not conducive of a craft that's supposed to be living forever. And we sort of have been paying attention to it over time, watching how things have been deteriorating and how they've interacted with humans. You know, every time a ship docks, it puts stress on the space station. And there is craft that come and go from the ISS all the time. Progress cargo craft, SpaceX crew dragons, Cygnus cargo crafts, Russian Soyuz, all of them. They've, they've been putting stress on the space station for such a long time. Not to mention just the use of the equipment, the machinery in there, uh, and the materials that the space station is made of, they're not meant to last forever. Um, just like if you were to wear a t-shirt, like it looks brand new the first couple of times you wear it, but eventually you start seeing a hole under the arm, or maybe the colors start fading and the neck starts to fray. Things don't last forever. So NASA and all of the partnering countries that have worked together on the ISS throughout the decades are basically determining a date to terminate the ISS. So what that means is they want to bring it down from orbit. Now, if you know anything about deorbiting a vehicle from space, you'll know that typically means it doesn't come back in one piece, at least for craft like satellites. Those have to just burn up in the atmosphere. And the reason that burning happens is because spacecraft need to be flying at orbital speed. And that means it needs to be flying so fast that it beats the curvature of the Earth. So it keeps staying in orbit around planet Earth. And that speed is so quick that once you start lowering its orbit, it starts interacting with the atmosphere again. And every atom of our air, that's oxygen and nitrogen and a host of other elements, those start to create drag on the vehicle. So the ISS will be coming down in the atmosphere and that drag is so intense that it creates plasma around the vehicle. And if the vehicle does not have proper shielding, the vehicle will burn up. This is intentional and it happens all the time with a used satellite or spent rocket stages. But the International Space Station will be safely deorbited over the Pacific Ocean. There's a place called Point Nemo, which is actually the rocket graveyard or the uh, satellite graveyard. There's a couple different ways you probably say it, but it's the one place on earth that's the furthest away from land in every direction. And we've been deorbiting things over the ocean for decades, really in that one spot. Now, something to consider here is that the space station is extremely large. It's the largest spacecraft ever flown. It's about the size of one American football field. So we need to find a way to safely navigate this thing down into a lower orbit into the Earth's atmosphere without interfering with other spacecraft, satellites, communication satellites, weather satellites, internet satellites. And we need to get it to deorbit in the right place safely. So NASA and its partners have to find a vehicle that can steer the space station down to that point. So they've contracted SpaceX, that's Elon Musk's rocket company, if you're not familiar with it. And they are going to design a vehicle, most likely a updated version of the SpaceX Crew Dragon craft or the Cargo Dragon craft, which are a variation they decide to base it on. And they're going to dock it with the forward end of the space station. So when it comes to orbital mechanics, your brain naturally will think that if you want to raise the orbit of a vehicle, you'll be pushing it up. And if you want to lower the orbit, you want to push it down. But that's not the case. What you need to do is actually either accelerate or decelerate the vehicle, meaning forward and backward. So if you want to increase the orbit of a craft, you need to push it from behind to move faster. That means along the curve of the Earth, you're going to push it further out over time. And the opposite is true as well. If you want to slow a vehicle down, you need to put a craft on the forward end of it and push against its movement to slow it down to decelerate it and that will push into a lower curve and eventually over time the vehicle will lower relative to the planet. So by 2030 SpaceX is supposed to have this vehicle designed and ready to function so that they can perform this deorbit maneuver for the space station. 
Now, there is so much that is at play here because the first thought I had, of course, was, is there any way that we can preserve the space station? So like I said earlier, the first module went up in 1998. It was sent up by Russia. Now, they've added modules throughout the decades that it's been in service. So the United States and Japan and Canada and the European Space Agency have helped build the station as a whole, but not all of the parts are old. Like I thought there might be a couple of different ways that we could preserve the space station. So the first way I thought of, and NASA has been thinking about this too, is that they could instead raise the orbit instead of lowering it for re-entry. They could raise the orbit move out all the humans back to Earth and leave it almost in a mothball fleet sort of position, kind of like they do with Navy ships or airplanes that no longer are in service. They could basically terminate the function of it, put it in a safe parking orbit around the Earth and just leave it be until they can come up with the funds and strategy to repurpose the space station. However, that effort alone would be extremely expensive and more costly than deorbiting it but also there's a higher risk to all the other objects that are happening around the planet. So all the other satellites and space debris and derelict rocket stages, things like that could pose a massive threat to the space station. And if the space station gets hit by any of this debris, especially big pieces, that could create an even larger threat for objects in space as well as future human space flights. So we want to find it a safe place that that won't happen. So it's likely that this won't be the case because it will just cost too much but it would be a cool theory to potentially raise the orbit of the space station and either bring it down later safely or find a new purpose so we can break it apart into its pieces and maybe move some of the modules to another station you never know there could be some cool things to to try here the option two that i thought of was to break the station apart and use a ship such as SpaceX Starship, which is the world's largest spacecraft that's being developed right now. And you could launch that into space with capacity to safely return many of the modules back to Earth. Sort of like a lifeboat scenario, but instead of people, you'd be bringing home pieces of a space station. And what would be super cool would be if you could reassemble the space station piece for piece back on Earth for preservation and study perhaps in a museum or in a lab somewhere where we can study the effects of radiation and space vacuum exposure to components and hardware, it would be incredible. But the third little edge I have on that, sort of a option 2.5, was for fans like me and perhaps like you, people who just love space and love the space station, what if we could go touch it? What if we could go walk through the ISS if they brought it back? I thought that'd be an incredible way to inspire a new generation to be like, look at how much we learned using this spacecraft. And I would be there first in line, guaranteed. I want to touch this thing. I've seen it so many times. I think it makes sense to eventually meet an old friend in person. So I don't know about you. It sounds kind of crazy, but it would be pretty cool if they could make that happen. But of course, I know that that is a very unrealistic option because it is even more expensive than the first option. You would have to design an entirely new spacecraft system, spend all the money on the launches, and risk bringing all of those pieces back home. You'd need astronauts to disassemble a space station that was never meant to be taken apart, essentially. It was built to be built, and that's it. It just doesn't really make sense, but a fan like me can dream. And if I were to put a little bit of a spin on that option, I would also say they could just bring parts of it home. And just this morning, I was reading an article on space.com talking about exactly this, where maybe they don't have the money or means to bring the whole station home, but perhaps they could bring home pieces of it, memorabilia, artifacts, panels on the wall that have stickers on them, the bell that they use to ring coming and going ships, kind of like a naval bell on a dock. There's all sorts of things that could be brought home within the spacecraft that already exist. And if I were to lobby for one piece of the space station for myself, it's the solar panels. I just want a little piece of the solar arrays because those things are the coolest part of the space station, hands down, at least in my opinion. When I take a picture of the International Space Station up close, the first thing I look for are the solar panels, the golden hue that is on them, the orange and gold color. It's beautiful. And if I could have a piece of that framed in my studio, 
I would pay top dollar for that. So perhaps there's a space community that out there that can help create some awareness around this and maybe they can consider taking some pieces back for us space fans. Who knows? I'm just hopeful. Let's be honest. But anyway, those are the things I was thinking about regarding the space station. And we'll, of course, be paying attention to the news as it unfolds. We have six plus years until the deorbiting happens. And there is even a chance that could extend the life of the space station still. I am very excited for SpaceX to be the contractor for this job because they have an incredible track record of success being a launch provider and Their innovation, their spirit of pushing the frontier of space exploration along is literally leading the entire industry more than any government, more than any other commercial organization. Everything not only functions better, it is moving the needle forward and they happen to look cool in the process. That's just an added bonus, of course. So I have no doubt that SpaceX will do a fine job taking care of this extremely important task which inevitably will happen and because i am such a fan of the iss i will be shedding many tears when they decide to deorbit the space station like i said it feels like an old friend of mine but even the best of friends know eventually you need to say goodbye on the topic of the iss one of the most profound impacts that it has made on the human race more than any other scientific discovery or technological advancement has been the example of international cooperation that it has made for the world. Now, as we know by looking at history, nations tend to not cooperate with each other. In more modern times, yes. However, there still are wars and border conflicts and all sorts of governmental disputes that happens regularly, and none of that will go away entirely. However, I firmly believe that we as a species can do better. If you look at the International Space Station and the partners that have helped assemble it, maintain it, and learn from it and grow from it, these were nations that just less than a century ago were mortal enemies. I'm talking about the United States and Japan and Germany and Russia. All these countries that were literally destroying each other not too long ago, people that were alive during my own grandparents' generation are now cooperating. They're friends and they're helping humanity thrive. So this, of course, leads me to the question I want to ask it is, why couldn't we always do this? Where did the human race go wrong along the way that said, I'd rather destroy this country versus let's work together and see what we can do as a collective species. And I believe that the ISS has been one of the first and most amazing examples of this. And it's given me hope for humans as a whole, but space continues to be this example of let's do this together. Let's not worry about the past. Let's actually look forward as a species. Let's be hand in hand partners and friends in the process and let's see how far we can go and i just love that about the iss and it brings me so much joy and it warms my heart to think about and i can't wait to see what new vehicles and new missions happen in space perhaps to the moon maybe even mars where we get to see nations working together not against each other it's going to be amazing and i do have hope for the human race because of the iss Let's shift gears and look into the future. What will space exploration look like for humans after the ISS is deorbited? Now, the ISS is currently the only destination for humans other than Tiangong, but there are plans to take us to future space stations, both Orbital Reef, which is a commercial space station, and Gateway, which is going to be around the moon, which is a collaboration between NASA and the European Space Agency and other international partners. Also, the lunar surface is in the ballpark for options for places to go. We're currently working on that with the Artemis program, NASA's successor to the Apollo program. And of course, we've got the red planet, Mars, commercial companies, in my opinion, will probably be the first to get there. Government spending is just not interested in advancing spaceflight as much as it was back in the 60s and 70s. So I think the corporate sector and these private companies like SpaceX 
will be fighting to reach Mars first. And I think that will happen in the 2030s. I think it's just around the corner. We're kind of halfway through the 2020s at this point. And it seems to me that with the advancement of Starship and other vehicles that are coming down the pipe, Mars is finally within reach for humans. Before it was kind of a pipe dream. Any sort of mission that came together by a private company almost seemed too good to be true, and most of them crumbled under the pressure or lack of funding to deliver on something that was safe for humans. But I think we'll get there, and it's going to be exciting to watch. So be ready for future space stations, lunar landings, and eventually humans on Mars. All right, and that wraps things up for episode eight of the Galactic Window Space Podcast. I hope you guys learned something here in the mess of news and facts and discussion about space and space exploration. I love doing this. I love just talking and sharing what I know, sharing what I've learned with people just like you. And I hope that you can go and share what you've learned with other people. It's kind of like educational wildfire. It's a good thing to be sharing knowledge and to be excited about the things that you're learning today. So don't forget to subscribe to the Orbital Alliance right here on YouTube and on other social media platforms. You can find the link in my bio and go ahead and support Tan, my co-host here on the Galactic Window at Chasing the Milk on all social medias as well. And of course, we will see you in the next episode here with a guest live on YouTube. It's been a pleasure being your host today. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you all on the other side. 